Hello guys, this video will show you how you can kind of, um, things that I've found that look good and, and what kind of things that don't look too good in terms of like smoothness. And real quick, guys, want to know that when you course practical sci-fi design, you will learn to effectively model instead of 3ds Max and plasticity, and then use V-Ray to create procedural materials. And all without leaving Max, you will learn how to do color correction, volume light, lens effects, and use V-Ray's decal system to create quick decals. So be sure to check that out in the description. So what I've noticed that if something is too sharp or something is too smooth, uh, you're not going to get a good aesthetic look to it. And so if I, if I share right here, for example, so I can then kind of inset that and uh, shoot it again here. All right. And I'm just going to go ahead and just use the support loop workflow and get something like this. So what I've noticed if something is too blobby like this, it doesn't look very good. Uh, the only situation is like if you have a button like on a shirt, maybe, maybe if it's like a cartoon object, maybe it's appropriate. But I think in most situations, it's kind of blob, oval shape. Any, anything too blobby doesn't look too good. So on the other side, we have things that are too sharp. And so to make this really sharp, I'll just uh, insert you know, loops here. And then, uh, you know, very precise loops here, very, very uh, narrow loops. All right, and I'm going to go ahead and apply a symmetry. All right, so what I've noticed here is that when something is too sharp, uh, it also does not look very pleasing to me, and it just looks like way too sharp. So what I find is that a combination of smoothness and sharpness actually gives the most aesthetically pleasing results. So if I paste this right here, right away, because we're using symmetry and we have an edge going through here, already it starts to look better than this because we're starting to have a little bit of sharpness right here. All right, so what I can do, for example, is I can make this a little bit sharp. And already, I find this shape on the right to be much more pleasing than what we have going on over here. Whereas this one is too blobby, this one is too sharp, this one is already starting to shape up and look much better. All right, so I'll go ahead and insert loop there and there. All right, and already out of all these objects, I think this one starts to look the most appealing. We can insert a loop here, for example, and now once again, from this side, from this angle, we have the smoothness happening here, but it's also got the sharpness happening here as well. In other words, this is maintaining the smoothness, whereas up here, this is maintaining the sharpness. And especially right here, we have smoothness up top here, and then sharpness right here which creates a very nice contrast. I can further move this to the right. And once again, we have the smoothness here and the sharpness right here. So I think one of the keys to creating interesting shapes is to balance out the smoothness and the sharpness. One technique I like to do, I like to insert two loops through here. Or I guess you could say four loops because I got two up here and two here. We need four to make this happen. And then kind of just move this out like so. Then maybe insert uh, two loops. I find this works better with the support loop workflow. Um, but if you try and increase this, it's not going to get the same result. Increases just work a little bit differently. They require a little bit of a different mindset. And actually, let me go ahead and do that. Let me uh, try something different here. So, you know, this creates a nice pleasing result because we have the sharpness 
and then the smoothness. I'll select that. I'll shrink that. I'll move this up here. Maybe have some sharpness here as well. All right, so you can see now we're starting to get a much more pleasing result because we have a combination of sharpness and smoothness. But we can integrate some of that into this as well. So in order to make this uh, smooth, I'll select this here and then use a set flow here to smooth this out. And then I'll kind of uh, do that as well. So I'll apply out a poly on top of symmetry. I can move the central loop up here. Now reapply symmetry. All right now we've got the smoothness up here and sharpness here. So there's there's a variety of ways of put putting this principle into action. Here, for example, I will change flow. There we go. Once again, smoothness, sharpness, smoothness, sharpness, the constant interplay happening here. You know, I can also select this, for example, and move this. Or maybe just that. Now we've got this happening here. Once again, smoothness here, and a little bit of sharpness right there. So, smoothness and then sharpness. It's a very nice look. Once again, smoothness here, and a little bit of sharpness right here, just a little bit here. So, for example, if I insert one more loop, we can see the better, you know, smoothness here, and a little bit of sharpness here. We can even move this a little bit more to the right. So, smoothness, a little bit of sharpness. So, as you can see, in this method, we can build up much more pleasing shapes than just having everything be super sharp or everything just be super smooth right here. Combination, I feel, is really what makes things work.
once again smooth transition a little bit of sharpness right here 